Peace, 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 and blessings, family. It is yours truly, Amar Amari. I am the founder of Uwa Pele Movement. Uwa Pele Movement is a Yoruba word for gentle character. And we also focus on Ire Riri, which the Yoruba word is good character. Ewa Pele Movement, we focus on your spiritual, your physical, and your financial well-being. And I want to welcome all of you today to the African Studies Program, where we have the Evwe Brotherhood in the building. That's right. Our Evwe brothers have come on to be able to teach us about the actual, authentic African way of our people. So as I said to you, that the only way that you can truly have an African mind is to go to the root. And we must be taught about us, by us, so that we can actually get authentic al Kebalan information. So if you would be so kind at this time, please share and invite. I want to forward you this opportunity to share and invite as I will be doing the same. At this time, family, if you would be so kind to share and invite, that'll be great. Please share and invite. We have a Lorim and his brother. Greetings to everybody that's tuned in on Facebook and YouTube. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank you so much. But that's it. All right, family, we're getting ready to dive in right about now. Okay, family, as I discuss with you all, for those of you who follow the program, you know that I love to bring you facts. Okay, so this is what the program is based on, is true, authentic African studies. Well, we're not black, we're not Afro-American, we're not African-American. Hey, please and blessings to my cousin Shay Young in Rochester, New York, 585 in the building. Thank you so much for tuning in, cousin. I appreciate it. Okay. 
Oh, indeed, you're always going to have hackers out there as well that's on a mission to come cause confusion, but that's just the way that goes when you're doing the right thing. That's just what it is. But nevertheless, family, you know, I want to thank you so much again for tuning into the program so you can get authentic African knowledge, okay? And so I want to introduce you to the culture of the motherland. As promised, I always pride um, this platform on the fact that we bring people to you that are organically from the motherland. Okay. Our brother, both of our brothers here, you know, um, their parents are everywhere. Okay. Both of them. Okay. So, so, uh, his mama, his papa, you know, both of them are everywhere. So you're dealing with a brother whose bloodline is rooted in Africa. Okay. He was born and raised over in the motherland. Okay. He never been to America. Okay. He was reared up in his culture. All right. So today we're going to allow him to speak and give him room to be able to induce to us the everywhere way of life. So, brother, how you doing, man? Please introduce yourself. You know, please pronounce your names and let us know who you are. Yeah, um, I am Enya Maheto. All right. And I am Elam Kwesi Aheto. Uh, where alum alum means that love alum means that love and then we're talking about the supernatural love which is alum and then the kwesi means that i am born on sunday so we see in africa or in Ghana, we are sometimes named this we are born so i am born on sunday so we see and he's Kwabina, meaning he's born on Tuesday. And then the Aheto. But what I know is that Aheto is the first male born in a family. Hmm. That is after you have labored for so long and you've been seeking to give birth to a male. And then he appears, isn't it? Yeah. And he appears at the end of the day, you name it. Or you name him Aheto. So Elam Kwesi Aheto. And then Enyam Kwabla Aheto. Yes. So that's what I can now, say. Right I have now. a question. Does everybody, every all, all, all of the males, do all of you have a name after the day of the week that you was born on? Like the Akan? Like for my myself. Um, my name would be Kofi because I was born on Friday. So does every male have a name that's after the day of the week or is it, is it named something different? Yes, it comes as something that is not. The day you are born, you take the name in that. So from Sunday to Saturday, whether male or female, you take the name of the day you were born. But some people may not be formal. But for the informal use in the family, that is largely encouraged. And not only for male born, it also pertains to female, female. born. Yeah. So like mm. you said, you are Kofi. So your feminine, the feminine will be Afi. Or if you are in other languages but in a way is if you are if you are, or a fee in my language ever which is corruptibly known as a way yes you know let's let's talk about that so um in your language when when you translate it into english it loses its meaning right because um there isn't certain alphabets that uh are in the Ewe language in the english language right mm -hmm. all right so uh, let me come straight uh the language or uh, the people i am part call Ewe we are part of the every plan, but in the English language for the lack of 
some of our alphabet in the English language or letters, yeah. yes. or letters in the English language, they try to conjure or they try to, you know, find the meaning closer. Find the meaning closer based on the letters. Based on the letters they have. So because they don't have the way, the way, and then like other letters, letters in the ever language. Ever language they try because you and I know that in the English language, where is a female ship? <laughs> and how can a female ship be, be a tribe? <laughs> you know, you got it's ridiculous. It's, it's very, very ridiculous. So, so that, that, is, that is it, basically. Yeah. Okay, so 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 let's talk about what does what does Ebwe mean in your in your language? Ebwe, Ebwe simply, if you want to look at it literally, Ebwe can mean a hole. Ebwe, a ditch. Looks like a hole. H O L E. Oh, okay. But as to why and, and, they we are known as as to how we are known as the ever, that may have some kind of um, historical antecedents, and uh, we may look into that and then get to you on it. Yeah. But on a literary level, ever simply means a whole. Okay. All right now. Yeah. Do our people call themselves black there? Or do you identify with your people? Like you say, I'm Edwin. All right, our people. Or do you, say, or do you Ghana, say I'm black? All right, when we come to Ghana or any other part of Africa or Akabulan, there's no such you know, color code. To say I'm black huh? or I'm a white, we know ourselves to be people. We are we are people. We we don't have any color code to anybody else. You are black or you are white or you are yellow or whatsoever. The only thing we know is that we are one people. We are people identity. with Africa identity. We are people with a Kabbalan identity. There's nothing like a color code, as you know. People perceive in the euro and and other countries. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Now, what is the Evwe people's spiritual system like traditionally before colonization? Because we're going to get to that too, as your brother was talking about earlier, about what happened even with your language, right? So prior to the eurasian causing um the edwe what was your traditional spiritual system was it voodoo if i what was your what's what, what's your traditional spiritual system well as we've come to learn and appreciate our people believe in a supreme being who in today may be referred to as but in their quest to reach that all supreme being which is the mao subolisa they admit that they can't do that by themselves and so they need intermediaries uh huh. And in getting through to the Mao, the Almighty, through the intermediaries, they use lesser gods, which are known as voodoo. Now, what they do is that they mold clay. It's those smaller gods or deities. When the English may call them deities. Smaller gods for which they recite incantations and communicate with through the pouring of libation and offering of foods. Uh -huh. 
over time, there are traditional priests or priestesses who are in charge of those gods. And those mm -hmm. people directly communicate the needs of the communities through those smaller gods to the almighty God or the supreme being or the Sobolisa. Or the Sobolisa. And mm -hmm. then the Sobol communicates through the lesser gods to the priests or priestesses to the people. So essentially, that is how they perceive God and spirituality okay. of, our people, yeah. of our people. Exactly. So now, is there is there female deity in your pantheon? Is there a female deity there? And is there a female deity? And what is her name like? And Ifa is uh, Iya Yamoja Iya Oshun. Yeah, but so the female that spiritual system the is, there, is there a female energy? The female deity is Yabasi. Mm hmm. And the male is Yabba. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that's the difference. Okay. So, so now let's talk about how uh, traditionally, how are women in the Ewe culture viewed amongst the Ewe people? Is is the woman highly revered? Is she is she frowned upon, looked at, you know, like she's less than, or is she put on a pedestal as like a queen and, and highly respected? Now, when you come to Ghana specifically. We are not here. The, the Ghanaian woman or the ever woman is highly revered. Now, if you talk about the ethnic groups or clans of people and the women who are that tribes or clans desire to marry, they are women. So they are highly revered and treated with dignity. respect. Ashe, because ashe. of the way they are raised. Because of the mm -hmm. way they are raised. Uh -huh. Our women are trained to be very loyal. They are trained to be very um, hardworking or diligent. And they are trained to be very, to keep to fidelity when they marry. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to add to that, yeah, they are highly you know, revered. So based on that, even when they are married, they call their husbands Nyapeto. Nyapeto, which means that my dog. And before they talk to their husband, they bow to show kind of respect to the man. To the man. Mm -hmm. So in all this, you can see, or in all these attributes, as Enyam has said, and having added with how they even address their husband it clearly shows that they are revered yes they are revered just like any other you know woman in ghana and in yeah, africa and the people of akabu land yes because that's who we are and yeah so is there any custom how the man shows reverence for the woman because you said that the woman she bows okay so what is the respect that the male gives to the woman well that that respect shown in the mutual it is mutual the respect between the man and the woman is mutual there is nothing like one being rated above the other. Uh huh. Uh -huh. But uh huh. I see. That I see. A semblance of respect and reverence to the man, and the man acknowledges it too. I see. I see. So. So when when the woman calls the woman Nyapoto, he responds by saying Nyapono. Okay, and what and what does that mean? Nyapeto means 
my lord for the woman the woman called the man which means my lord mm -hmm. and then the man responds by saying Nyafono, which means mm -hmm. the keeper of my house uh-huh uh -huh. that's what it means mm -hmm. so that kind of goes against the religiosity um that that we hear about there's only one lord because there are multiple lords because it's a title <laughs> yeah yeah because you know you know in in, in christianity there's only one lord <laughs> so um with that with that being said let's let's talk about you know libations like um what is the process for for libations do you have uh an altar to do your libations do you go outside and pour it on a plant um let, let's talk about libations and um the significance of libations and let's talk about what is libation let's start with that so people who don't know what libation is they can understand that and let's talk about the importance of it and and what's actually occurring when you do libations go ahead brothers libation as acknowledged by our people it's a way of praying to the almighty god through the smaller gods as i mentioned earlier so libations are poured on different and varied occasions for example if someone dies and performing rites to go and bury the person libations are poured for you to join ancestors that's an example you can join the ancestors and be accepted mm -hmm. by the faithful departed mm -hmm. now when there are festivals libations are poured to invoke the blessings of mouse obolisa on the people libations okay. are poured for bumper harvest by farmers libations are poured when there are weddings so depending libations are poured to invoke specific blessings mm -hmm. from mouse of bolisa uh -huh. so that the people can libations may be poured for protection they may be poured for childbearing for they may so it is a form of for thanksgiving yeah. to acknowledge what mouse of bolisa has done for the people so in short, libation is uh, how the Everland or the, our people acknowledge God through prayer. So prayer is essentially communication between a lesser person to a supernatural being. Mm -hmm. and so our people now I heard that the norm say ancestors. Right. Okay. So that's 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 what you consider to be the higher the higher being because of the ancestors being the ancestor realm. Yeah. And they do okay. so by pouring alcohol. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. water, water, water. As the case may be. So they get a calabash, then the water or alcohol is poured in, and then recite incantations by the chief priest. And then all the okay. other people work in faith. That is how it's mm -hmm. done. Okay, what what is a and calabash? The calabash is a god, mm -hmm. god fruit. Do you know the, the god fruit? No. G O R U R D. Okay. My first time you ever know hearing about of it. God. G O J O U R D. Okay, no. It's a fruit. It's a okay. kind of fruit that is split. That is split into two, just like melon. Yeah, just like melon. Watermelon. Now you see the outer shell of watermelon. Mhm. Mm yeah. So that is how the the, the god look like, but this is more mm -hmm. greenish. And it is splitted into two, and then the content of it is removed, and it is dry in the sun for it to turn brown. So after it has turned brown, it looks like mm -hmm. a smaller container. 
Mm -hmm. Looks like a container round where, you know, we we sometimes serve water in it. In it, our local drinks is being served in it. Even for visitors, and it can also be used domestically. So mm -hmm. that is what either the alcohol, yeah, that's what the alcohol is being poured in. And there is also a powder, like a maize powder which is being mixed with water so either the alcohol or the mixture of maize powder and water can also be put in it for the point mm -hmm. of libation mm -hmm. so just as he said the chief priest leads the prayers and then other elders back him and most of the time you will see them with clothes around their waist without wearing off shirts so they expose the upper part of the body with clothes just around the waist sometimes line. white clothes just mm -hmm. tied around the waist during the point of libation so the other elders behind the chief priest point the libation they join in faith so that the prayers will be accepted by the gods and then our ancestors because they invoke mm -hmm. ancestors to come and perform and then do things but then and then you and i know that our ancestors are people who have lived good life and at the end of the day are dead and are buried so they invoke them to come and help, help them with other blessings with thanksgiving and all that you can think of Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about um, how does marriage work? Um, do you have to pay a dowry if you want to get married? Yeah, you have to pay a dowry. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the African setting, marriage is essentially in three parts. Because we believe in the extended family, there is the first part where the the immediate families will have to meet assuming you find a lady in everland and you want to marry her the first thing you need to do after the lady has accepted your proposal is to notify your parents and then the lady also notifies the parents and the reason when the reason is that the marriage in africa it's, it's between the families, though the two individuals are going to marry, but it is also seen as a relationship between the two families. And, and to add, before you continue, I want to add this, and to also identify if from the same bloodline, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we're trying to also prevent insects in the family. Mm. Okay, that, so that's why the first point of call is to family. introduce your spouse to the family and out of interrogation they will begin to know where you come from the home you come from and all that so that they will be able to establish that you are not from the same blood line or from the same nuclear family because in our culture sometimes your father can marry to more than one wife mm -hmm. or more than two and ah, three or four. Okay. Your father might have gone to give birth somewhere, which you might not know. <laughs> yeah. In you'll be able to know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> when, when that process, when that process is, you know, gone with, the families will accept. So the lady's family will now accept the male's family. When that is done, a small ceremony will be done. When this, that ceremony is done, the male together with his family will present some gifts and some items to the lady's family and then they will share drinks and food thereafter they will do the traditional engagement which is much broader so this one it moves a bit beyond the nuclear family here other extended families like uncles aunties that nephews means. nieces may come in it is at this point yes. that the dowry is paid another list 
And the dowry varies from, you know, um, a people to a people. I'm talking about mm -hmm. But specifically to the Everland, specific amounts may be determined. One to the lady's father, then monies may be paid to uh, the lady's mom as well. No. Then the in-laws, especially the males. Because the males are the, the lady's brothers as deemed as those who have taken care of her while she was much younger protected. and protected her against all forms of violence or harm from other men from other <laughs> men so that for that man to come and marry so he has to compensate for all those efforts so if they are one two or three they may have to be compensated but mm -hmm. this this may be summed up in monetary values and then they negotiate and come to a common agreement because they know that marriage is for the common good of both families. So a good negotiation between the families and comes to an agreement that maybe you pay this amount to, for the man, the lady's mom, the ladies, so. that it's, it's not symbolic. much though, but just to acknowledge, you are not paying for the lady, but to acknowledge the fact that ah. they have raised such a woman for you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And they have that, that's basically it's just it's just symbolic. Yeah, it's just symbolic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh -huh. beyond that stage, if they want it that way, the law allows it. They can go to court and then sign off and then finish with the legal as other aspects of that's the law. The European, the, the European system. But now we're talking about the ever. Uh -huh. So that ends it. So that ends it for the ever people. Okay, so now do 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 the airway believe in divorce? Do they believe in what? Come again. Div uh divorce. Divorce. Yes. Uh -huh. You know that there was no divorce. Um well that's a very difficult question. Nobody enters into marriage to divorce. But as things are, and with globalization, you know, sometimes things don't work out. But before, there wasn't. But before, our forebears married for 40, 50, 60 years till they died. Mm -hmm. And even when they practice polygamy, very interestingly, they were not even divorcing wives. Wives acknowledge their husbands. Maybe if the man married one, two, three wives, they all were loyal to him till the man was no more. And even if he died, they were going to be loyal in some cases, and they will not marry again. But now with globalization and those things, some of those things are a bit they are changing. Uh -huh. So how do you address the elders? Whenever you're dealing with an elder, do you have to request permission to speak? How, how do you address a ways? How how do you address the elders? All right. Uh, in addressing of okay, you know what, Amari, let me you know put this straight. With these discussions we are doing right now, um we are entitled whatever we say here right now does not present the full knowledge of our other airways we are speaking as we are Everest. speaking as ever we are speaking as experience and we are speaking as a government so in the our land in the our land or on the our land sorry we have three different groups, groups. in ghana yeah, in ghana, ghana yeah so we have those from the northern parts and then uh, Akata area, yeah, the middle belt, the middle belt, and then the, the northern, the southern, the southern belt. belt. Sorry, so we are coming from the southern belt. Those from the northern belt are more like Vedome, and then we have that of the Anglo, and then we have that of Agave. So we are Agave people. So okay. now to go straight to how to address each other, you know, because we most of the time care about the or we believe in a standard family we don't believe in a nuclear family system we believe in a standard family so if i meet a brother or a sister from the agave land and I'm, i have to address him 
unlike on the Europe plan where you just have to say good morning and they can choose to respond or not. In our setting, if you greet somebody and the person didn't even respond, it means a lot mm. to the greeter. And it sometimes also shows disrespect mm. to the person who has greeted you. Yeah, so we mm. address uh -huh. each other by greetings. And then with the yeah. greetings, it is not done, it is not done hurriedly. You spend time to greet and then ask of other relatives and then ask of other significant one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you can you give us an example brother, of that? Come again. Can you show can you show us an example? Can you give us an example? Like you and your brother show us an example. All right, so uh it is it is uh 9 36 here right now, which is in the evening. So if I want to unlike in Europe, if I meet my brother on the street, I'll just say, Oh, good evening. And that's all. You can choose but you know, what's setting. When I meet my brother, I don't just greet good evening and just pass away. So I ask him, Fianni, Fianni, Debia, Ofo, Tro, Ofo, Fofo, Ofo, Amadasia, Ole, Okay, Ohans, Ohande, Anya, Ofo, Tro, Odo, Debio, Ofo, Tata, Odo, Yo, Akonama, Yo. So all that we are saying is that I greeted him that good evening and he also responded, good evening. How are you? I am fine. How is your father? He's fine. How is your mother? Mm. He's fine. She's fine. How is your children? children? And all the they are all fine. Then mm. I also respond. I, it is my turn, and I will also ask him the same question. I replicate it. You see, just to because if I'm really interested in knowing the well-being of somebody, the well-being of just one person is not all. But around the person is very important. The dependent. The dependent is very important to know about their well-being. Because Amari, just as you are sitting there right now, if Queen is not feeling well, you are not feeling well as well. So mm -hmm. if I really want to know you are feeling well, I have to know all that matters to you, your wife, your children, and probably if you are staying with your your mother or your father your cousin and mm -hmm. what have you i have to know all that so that i know that yeah so through this you'll be able to reveal that oh but this person is not feeling well and through that you all come into you know compromise to see how you can help mm -hmm. okay yeah that is where the community okay. spirit to bear on our on our lives yeah Okay, so do do you have royalty there? Do you have kings and queens? Wait. Oh yes, we do. Um, at the communal level, we have chiefs. In the Ever language, we call them Efia. Yeah. Now, um, he is assisted by the queen, who is Nonufia. That is in respect to the lady. Then these are, we know chieftaincy in Ghana is well organized. So from the that divisional level, then there's we move up till the regional level. That is how chieftaincy, so we have them. I mean, they are the custodians of the traditions, the culture, and they are symbolically the embodiments of the spirit and soul of, of our people. Mm -hmm. uh, so and they are well respected and revered and they they are opinion leaders in all communities across africa essentially mm -hmm. they are the owners of the land custodian and so you don't go to a place anew without you know meeting the chief if you're a stranger in the town or place the first point of call is to go to the chief's palace who will introduce you to the town. And once they accept you, it means the whole people have accepted you. Mm hmm Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, 
when you're dealing with you know your your social life like beyond just just greetings like how how do you go about dating a woman is there is there a certain way that you have to approach a woman is there something that you need to do you need to go through her brother or how how does it work if you're interested in a woman you want to pursue a relationship work um well, in the African, with respect to our people, uh, if I want to give you a histo I want to give you a historical uh, perspective. Okay. His historically, you may have to go through the parents. Formally, maybe if you are interested in, let's say, Lady B, right? Lady you will go directly, let's say, Lady Amma you will go direct you don't go directly to her or you see her and you have talks with her when you have expressed interest and she agrees then you tell your parents when you tell your parents your parents will go to the lady's parents hmm. and then they will give the message to the parents of the lady when they hear the message they will call the lady to confirm whether she has given word to you. Hmm. Uh -huh. So when that is accepted, then the conversation can move from that level. That's how it's mm -hmm. done. So is there a age limit to that being done or it doesn't matter how old you are? Age. Age. Well, yes. that might have been sorted between you and the lady in question. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. But now, let's go back to speaking, the... normally. No, go go ahead, brother. Say please again. finish. No, please please finish your statement. Yeah, I was saying that it depends on the two individuals, but generally speaking, the men are normally preferred to be older than the women. Okay. That's the general view. Okay. Okay. So now let's let's deal with what we were talking about before. You was going to found on your language, like how yeah. it was interrupted by the Germans. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And the Dutch and the German. Okay, now we'll take it. Yeah, so what I was saying was that colonialism brought Europe to Africa. And in Ghana, we were colonized principally by the British. But the Ewell land saw civilization coming from the Danes and then the Germans. Now, essentially, because such weathers were good for the Germans, it was just like they went back home. In the coast. In the coast. And because we have the Volta River and then a lot of water bodies, which gives a lot of coolness to the Europeans, the Germans and the Danes are there. So our people lived with them. So as we civilized um, for with Western education, it was principally the Germans who helped us. And they helped us develop our language in terms of the literature, the literature part. So we share a lot of letters in the Ewe language with the Germans. So the Germans uh, helped us to develop our literature. And so they are able to even read the Ewe language. That's, that's Germany, basically. Even in Germany. It's even in Germany, yeah. So and even in Germany, it's a course in mm. Germany. Our, the Ewe language, language is a course in Germany, Germany yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, so did they force themselves their way into um, our people's land? You know, over there, did they take over by force, like with guns and, you know, made okay, you take good. on their way of life? Because I noticed that you you both, you still speak your language and you still dress according to um, modern day African attire, right? So 
what did they do over in Ghana when they came into Ghana? All right. Yes, that's okay, so the okay. center. Yeah, so the slavery. Uh, I think uh, we're having some interruption with the internet. That is why um, I think there's that interruption. So if you can repeat the question again. Okay. I noticed that you speak your language. And I noticed yes. that you both are wearing your modern day African clothing, right? So it appears to me that your people preserve the culture. Is that not right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what did the Germans do when they came into Ghana? What did they do? Did they force their way into Ghana by violence? Wait, let's talk about slavery. Okay. Slavery in Ghana. Uh, um, as we came to know, you know, in, in our courses, um, essentially, the early settlers from Europe where they brought <laughs> very, very interesting figures to even deceive our people. They brought things like gunpowder, mirror, mirror, um, belt, shoes, and all the things to deceive our people and to take away essential wealth in things like gold, uh, mineral resources, okay. timber, forestry, and all of those things. We and came to hear that. Resources. Yeah, and even the human resources. Mm. You know, if you read about slavery in Africa or the Pan African, it's, it's a big thing that really affected our people. And I, yeah. uh -huh. mm. So that has left a lot of gap, you know, uh, in our human resource base. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that is as we came to here. Yeah. Okay. So how how long how long was our people under the the British or the German rule over in Ghana before Ghana received their independence? Um, we had, history has said that even the earliest settlers in Ghana um, settled around the 14th, 15th century, as, as early as um, 1482. And Ghana gained, Ghana gained independence in 1957, so you can imagine. Mm. Yeah, so it had to take a lot of activism. Mm. Uh -huh. So it, activism, if you read about the you hear the things from uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Mams Gave, uh -huh. uh, Aziki Way of Nigeria, um, Abraham Lincoln. In, at a point, even some of the white settlers had to join in the fight. European, yeah. Some of the Europeans um, had to join in the fight. George Whitefield and all those guys had to join in the fight. You know, and then as our people became more elite and went to Europe and studied and came down, then they kept pressuring the British government till eventually. I think if my history is right, the last governor in the Gold Coast was uh, Lord Listowell in 1950s, in the 1950s, who was last recalled. And then Krumah, together with um, the independence fighters like J.B. Adankwa, J, William, mm -hmm. and then they fought yeah, feverishly for they fought feverishly for independence. And mm -hmm. so um, at the back of that, the British, um, the Queen of England didn't have an option at the time because of the activism of the people. The people were very aggressive. They fought mm -hmm. for independence. And in 1957, six March, they had it. Mm -hmm. Now, this when you say aggressive level. Okay, when you say aggressive, do you mean that they actually fought, like physically fought? Yes, it, there were physical fights. Yeah. Because in 1947, for example, because the Queen of England was in charge of our territory, they sent out our soldiers to war in Burma. And when the soldiers had to give them 
some conditions. But the governor at the time would not give such conditions. So the chiefs led the people and to attack the they went to press on their demands from the governor at the castle then. And so they they returned fire on the and the people, and that was a very violent scene. So when you come to Accra, there is a road called the 28th February Road. It's in honor of three soldiers who were killed in those attacks. Uh, Private Atipo, Sergeant Odate Lante, and then uh, there was another one, Lance Corporal. There were so three soldiers died in that battle um, in 1947, 28th okay, February. We normally celebrate them. So the chiefs led the people in the streets to demonstrate against um, um, rulership by the British. So they realized that at that point, it was getting more scary every day and people were being mobilized and organized to the streets every day. So it became very intense. At that point, they realized that they, they had no option but to leave the shores of the Gold Coast and handle um, political independence to, to our people. Yeah. Okay. I, I greatly appreciate that. That's what I wanted, I wanted to, you know, to discuss as well because um a lot of our people don't really understand that a lot of our people over in the motherland um is still fighting the same fight you know that we're fighting over here and and from my understanding our people are still going through issues with the politicians over there is, is that right mm. Yeah, can I repeat that again? I think. Okay, sure. Sure, no, no problem. Um, over there in the motherland, a lot of our people don't mm -hmm. understand that our people over there still had to fight colonization too, and a lot of them don't understand that over there some of you are still going through issues with politicians like we are going through with politicians over in america is that right are you still yeah. the government are you still having problems like with the government like the people being taken care of he's trying to say sir are we still fighting colonization Yes, um, because there's a belief. Uh, what we are seeing is not that physical attribute where they bought people and enslaved them physically. But we are thinking that colonization has been repackaged mm -hmm. and brought leaders in a form of ideology. And democracy. You get it? Because yes. uh -huh. once we gain political independence, the next level to move is economic independence so that the people can be better off. Mm -hmm. But our leaders still go for grants from some of these Western powers. They still go into agreements for which they still batter our natural resources. For example, when you come to Ghana now, one of the current issues on the table as we go into the elections is that the current governments want to trade off all our natural reserves for some paltry billions over a 15 years period and that is on the table now so all of these things and things that have happened in the past and the books that we have read you know tells us that colonization is not physical but it's still returning to the motherland in the form of ideology and we mm -hmm. believe that is true. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. You know, so so I appreciate yeah. that, you know, you sharing that information because we need to understand that, you know, um, even though we go over there, we still had to be prepared to fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we still we still have to fight. 
Um, so also I wanted to talk to you yeah. about, and this is my last question for you um, for this evening. And after this, we'll close and you'll have an opportunity to share something that you wanted to share that perhaps I may not have asked or addressed. Okay. Now, um, do any of our people there claim to be Hebrews or to be Israelites? Yeah, like something if you want to mean this up. Anyway, um to to share with you about some of the things you are not being able to ask. Also, it's about our festivals, like okay. activities that okay. once activities that activities that brings us together, like marriage, okay. like festival. Yeah. So for instance, when there is festival in any parts of Ghana. You know, a lot of people have migrated from their no. uh, ancestral hometown to the city and the then to other, you know, let's say to the cities for uh, greener Work, pastures. Yeah, economic life. And then economic life. Yeah, to mm -hmm. make sure. So when there is festival and there is marriage, funeral, and a lot of festive activities, we go back to our homeland, like our ancestral homes, to mm -hmm. go celebrate such events. And when, it, mm -hmm. it, when, when we go, it's, it's one of the platforms that foster unity. So when you come, we are very, very hospitable. Okay? And then mm -hmm. too, there is that connection. There is that connection. And when we go for such events, like a festival, wedding ceremony funeral or whatsoever it serves as the ground it gives her that the platform to settle disputes if there are disputes among brothers and then among family members we use that opportunity to actually you know address them okay and then two like festival for instance is also the platform for developmental because having gone to work in the cities and having accumulated some few money, some funds are raised to for developmental project in in you know in our ancestral homes and out of all these things, foster unity. You you're going to meet people you have not met before, or, in a long or on a long while. You all come together, and that keeps uniting us each and every day. And because we are also hospitable people, I've forgotten to mention this. I remember when I was in our hometown, there is this, um, how do you call it? It's a form of culture that we all eat together. So when we go for such events, we all eat together from one place, mm -hmm. okay, from one where, and the do more you use we your hands? eat together, we are bonded. Yeah, we eat with our hands. Now we eat depending with our hands, the depending, no, but we eat with our hands. That That is what, what we are, we eat with our hands, not fork or, Spoon. yeah, traditionally. That is how it is. So whilst we eat, we discuss, we talk, and, you know, we discuss, and then it brings some kind of bonding together. And then some, after meal ourselves, sometimes we reserve some, okay? It, it, we reserve some because, we believe that you might have a visitor on our way. You know, on the airwell in those days when we don't have any medium of communication, so you'll be there and then somebody can even come in the night without informing you, person can rather your cousin or whatsoever. And the time they arrive, you might not have any food vendor around. So we always try to reserve food so that if they come at any time, they can also get something to eat. All right. Okay. Yes. All right. Now to the to the last question, and we're going to end it here. Do any of our people claim to be Hebrew Israelites? Hebrew Israelites. Huh? Claim to be Hebrew Israelites. People claim to be Hebrew Israelites on our land. Please come again with your question. Does any 
of our people claim to be Hebrews, like Jews? Do any of the Ewe say they are Jews or Hebrews or Israelites? To the best of our knowledge, Amari, but we'll find more about that. Okay. So, so um, according to your knowledge is no for right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. One thing I've also forgot to, to also is how we mention the name of our parents, brothers. So for instance, my mother. Okay. My mother is, my mother is Danye. My father is Tatanye. And then my brother like this will be uh, Novinya Inchu. And then my sister will be Novinya Nyonu. Okay. And then my auntie, cousins. Aunties will be Tassi. Yeah, my auntie will be Tassi. Tassi, Tassi, Tassi is uh, my auntie Tassi. Like my father's sister, who happens to be my auntie, is Tassi. And then my mother's sister will be Nodi, even though they are all my aunties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though they are okay. all aunties, but based so, on them. The okay, so how you say grandma? Matilina, yeah. How you say grandma and, and, grandma. and uh, grandpa? Oh, grandma is Mamanya. Okay. And then grandpa is Togbe. Togbenya. Togbenya. Togbe. 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 You know, sometimes Togbe is also used for ancestors. Togbe yeah, Togbe is also used for ancestors. Togbe. Yeah, even cheese. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my brothers, we appreciate it. So yes. Yeah. You have you have some last words, my yeah, brother. So, so I was... Yeah. So me, my last word is to say that uh, oh, we are people of good history and we are hospitable people. So if we have brothers and sisters who wish to invest in our land in ghana they can feel free and come over uh-huh and come over to do any form of business they want to there are still good people you know even there's a say that in every nut there may be bad nuts in every nut though but if you do your background checks very well i believe there are still like faithful people and people you know who see is other people as their brothers and sisters, respective of whatever they come from, mm -hmm. and are ready to, you know, work in hand in hand with them. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and and um, you know, one one last yeah. thought came to me too. So um, as well, have you ever heard of anybody saying that they are a more? Anybody saying what? That they are a more, like they claim to be a more. To be a more? Yes. Does any ever no. say we are moors? No. Not to the best. What does that word mean? The word See, more. that 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 mean if you don't know what it is, that means you don't. <laughs> That mean that you don't call yourself that. <laughs> so, so that that that's a solid no. <laughs> okay, my brothers, um, a family. Uh, you know, again, we like to thank you, my my queen, Amani, and Mari, and I, brothers, for you coming on. Um, we greatly appreciate yeah. you, you brother, sharing your time with our people to, to help us to better understand our culture in the motherland. So we'd like to thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. um, also, family, I have brother alone um, information here. Um, my brother does clothes. OK, he, he's the one who 
Um, him and I, we are in business together. So this is the good brother that makes your clothes for you. He's the one who takes all the measurements um, from, from myself when I send them over to Ghana. So this is my Ghana connection here and what I'm speaking about. Okay, and our brother, he does weddings. You know, um, there's items over in the motherland. I'll mediate that for you. You know what I'm saying? If you'd like to connect with the brother, you know, just come to me and I'll connect you and see what he can do for you, okay? Um, he helped another good, good sister of ours out by the name of Zipporah, Binya, you know, as well to find some things over in the motherland. So um, this is his information right there. That's his Instagram information. Okay, let me uh, fix that so you guys can know what is that information too. And I humbly apologize about that. I did forget to put um, that is on Instagram. Okay, so I'm gonna put IG on here for those who are watching. And put it back up. Okay, there you go. So it's on Instagram. So you can find our brother on Instagram. As I always say to you, family, that uh, we must connect with our family over in Africa. I talk to brothers like this all the time because I understand that they understand. And he helps me to pronounce words just like today. You seen that is not really airway because that word that that we know it as in the English form is a sheep. <laughs> you understand? So. You know, this this is the reason why it's so important for us to go back to our roots and to find out who and what we are. OK, so we can get familiar with ourselves. OK, so the only way that you can get to know yourself is by talking to yourself. In this case, it's not crazy <laughs> to get a response from talking to yourself, because when we talk to each other, we're talking to ourselves. OK, and we're helping ourselves to familiarize ourselves with ourselves. OK, so remember, um, we have these African studies program. I am have one for you um, on a weekly basis, uh, whether it be myself on here via um, having someone on the platform or whether it be me actually myself sharing information that, that I have um, gotten from my field of work of talking to the natives. Uh, we'll come on here and we're going to do a little bit more in depth. African studies so that way you can get authentic, authentic. Okay. Just like Taco Bell is not authentic African food. I mean, Mexican food or Hispanic food. Okay. Uh, this stuff that we're getting is synthetic too. If it doesn't come from the source, if it doesn't come from the source, then it is not authentic. All right. So go to the source. Thank you all for tuning in family. We appreciate it. Brothers, do you want to? Um, all right, all right. I'm already, I'm already last one, last one, and a quick one. I don't know if you are aware of uh, AK Doctor new book. That is a private part in public places. It's a new book our brother AK has written, and uh, you can secure your copy. You can secure your copy at www.marukakundi.org. It's a very new book that's beyond the ignorance. It's a guide for everybody who wants to. You know, take the leadership room. Yeah, so I will send you the link later so that you can also spread it. Okay, wonderful. I, I want to thank um, Queen Lacrosse Lounge for tuning in. Thank you, Queen, for tuning in. My cousin Shay Young, she said this is good information. Okay, so, you know, thank you so much for tuning in. Also, my good brother, Mark, um, thank you so much for tuning in, man. You know, so make sure, you know, you check our brother out. If you're looking for any type of photography, uh, make sure you go to Mark James Instagram and check him out. Um, have some good price, some good deals over there for you. Okay. All right, family. Um, brother, do you have anything that you would like to say? Oh, we are grateful for the opportunity to have interacted, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Sure. So we'll say fianina, yeah, yeah. fianina. 
Yeah. All right, family. Take care. Thank you all for tuning in. Blessings, family.